Speaking once again with Mr. Dustin Ortiz, who is coming off a scintillating, exciting, emphatic stoppage win over Mateus Nicola Pereira at UC on Fox 30. Thanks so much for doing this, Dustin. Absolutely. Let's do it. You know, let's uh, talk to you uh, heading into the event. And I don't remember if I actually asked you, or maybe I wasn't aware of the fact that Nicola was a betting odds favorite. Um, were you aware of that before the fight went down, and did that bother you at all? Um, actually, to be honest, no, I wasn't aware of that at all. Uh, I've known in previous fights that I was the underdog, like, going in. Um, but this one, I, it, it never came up, you know? So I was unaware of it. Obviously, it don't really matter to me mm -hmm. if I'm the underdog or not because I've been so many times. Uh, it's always nice to be the underdog for the people that are betting on me. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't surprised. I'm always the underdog and that's what it is. Yeah. I mean, he had a fair amount of buzz behind him because of the wins he, he recorded heading into that fight. Um, how important of a victory was it for you? I mean, we talked before the fight and, and you kind of predicted what was going to happen, but, uh, now that you've gone out and, and done what you said you're going to do, I mean, how important uh, of a win and to win in that fashion, do you think it was for you? It was very important, like I've said many a time. Any win in the UFC is very important, and uh, every fight matters. So, you know, I look at every fight as this fight is the title shot, you know, because ultimately it is. When you get that shot in for a fight and you win, you're that much closer to the title. You're that much closer to getting your shot. So I look at everyone as a title shot. And when when you lose, you go you go back. So we're not looking at, at that. We're not focused on that. The win was it was huge. If he would have won, he would have catapulted up. I'm sure to number five, somewhere around in there. He would have got a top contender, and then he would got a title shot. That's what I'm looking for. You know, they put me. They keep they're keeping me. I might have moved back in the rankings. I don't know who's doing these rankings, but I probably just beat this boy and moved back a couple of spots. I don't seem to to be favored by anybody. I never have. So to go in there and do what I said I was going to do should be a, a huge statement for all the flyweights and for the UFC as well as an organization to say, okay, he's on a three-fight win streak. Two of the last kids that he fought were on a uh, uh, three fight win streak. The one before that, he knocked the guy out in 15 seconds. So I hope they're taking me a little bit more serious because I'm taking my myself very serious at this at this point in my career. You know, you don't get very many opportunities to do what I do, let alone this many fights in the UFC and continue to be an up and comer because that's how I look at myself. So to do it in that fashion was very very necessary. I knew that it was going to happen sooner or later. I just kept inching my, my foot a little bit closer each kick, um, and it landed, you know, and that was the game plan. I don't think I went for one takedown, you know. That wasn't my intention mm -hmm. going into this fight. It was to, uh, to move and groove, exactly like I said, and I stuck to the game plan, and good things happen when, uh, when you have a good game plan and you stick to it and uh, you train very, 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 very hard for it. Yeah, and you mentioned the rate, the the rate rankings. Uh, I think it, they're done by like a, a media panel, and certainly other people have wondered, have been you know puzzled by some of the rankings and how they're determined. I mean, there's been weeks where you you'll see guys move up two or three spots and they haven't even fought, and you know, obviously there's got to be people on that panel that are well informed about MMA, but. Uh, yeah, there's definitely uh, some odd decisions being made sometimes. Um, you, yeah. you know, I want to talk about Honestly, the... It, it, it doesn't even matter to me, to be honest. I just want the fights that, uh, that are going to move me closer towards my ultimate goal. If it takes me five more fights to, to get my shot, I'm willing to go that route. I'm willing to put in the work that it takes to get me to where I ultimately want to be. So I'm enjoying the journey. It's like nobody else's. So it's, therefore, it's it's uh, it's absolutely amazing. You know, because you're you fight at 125 and and 
Demetrius Johnson is current champ, and at least he is, as we're recording this, UFC 227 is going down tomorrow, he's going to fight Henry Cejudo, but um, it's an interesting division because Demetrius has beat so many of the top contenders, so uh, we're seeing guys get tapped for title shots uh, with, you know, streaks like yourself, 3-0, 4-0, you've got two memorable stoppage wins in there, so... I saw you made some comments about a title shot, and it kind of looks like you you believe that, you know, you, you can't, you're probably, like, right there, right? I mean, I'm guessing one more win, and, and you could be fighting for a title. Yeah, I, I truly believe that. And as my dad would say, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. You know, and I'm asking for my shot. I, I truly feel one more fight is, is enough for me. You know, I fought... Number, what, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, and I'm number nine. I fought all these guys. You know, if John Moraga is looking really good these days, I would love a rematch with him. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's ranked ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And he's on a nice little streak as well. He has a tough kid uh, that he's fighting next. Uh, If he wins that, you know, I I would love that rematch. And the winner of that gets a title shot next. I know uh, Pettis and uh, Formiga are fighting. That's a title contender fight as well. Yeah. So there's not a lack of guys to uh, to give it to Demetrius Johnson. You know, there's he doesn't have to go anywhere. The, the guys and the talent is in this weight division. We're all standing right here. So one more win, and I, I truly feel that I've done enough work. I fought the who's who, and I deserve, I am deserving of a title shot. I, I hold... The most KOs in the flyweight division, there's more statistics that you can look up that I carry titles for. Um, those don't come easy, especially in this division with so many great, talented, technical guys. So you don't see a lot of the flyweight knockouts, and I hold most of them. I wanted to ask you about the sort of the final flurry in, in the win over Pereira. Uh, he, he got that left hand up. Or was it right hand? I can't remember which side of the head, but he definitely blocked. He he got he, part of his hand up. He got it up in time to, to block it somewhat, but the force was still there to send him to the to the mat. Maybe tell people a little bit about you know Daniel Cormier kind of talked about it. What didn't he do correctly there? Yeah, so he got his left hand up, and which was in, in perfect. It was in a perfect position. If he would have had his right hand over it as well. Right. But when you're block when you're blocking with just the one hand, you wanna be to where your elbow is so high and your hand is actually wrapped around the back, back of, of your, your neck. Head. So yeah. you when I kick, I'm kicking pretty much the the bicep in between the shoulder and the the elbow. So that's where I would have landed and that would have been so much harder to get through because uh, your your um, your bicep is so much bigger and stronger than where your wrist is, and so when he put his left hand up, he reached with his right hand and tried to pass it by, but I came over top of that and landed right where his wrist is. His wrist gave in, hit his chin, and it just takes that little second on the right spot of your head to to knock you loose, and that's what happened. Uh, I put enough force behind it, and I didn't even connect clean with my shin. That's, you know, where you're ultimately taught to land a head kick is with your shin because then it's night-night for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but because I put so much behind it, the foot just wrapped around the wrist and was able to uh, to collapse it and get to the chin and drop him uh, on his butt. So uh, a good friend of ours, uh, Damian Trainer was just at CSA Combat Sports Academy in Dublin, California, and he was going over that. This, this guy is one of the most elite striking coaches out there, and fighters in general. Some of, going back and watching some of his fights, he's such a, a talented, technical, smart fighter, and he was just going over that. He actually posted a clip on it um, and explained it perfectly if oh, I didn't just- already enough. No, you did, and, and um, did, you mentioned that shooting takedowns wasn't part of the plan. Do you think that he was kind of expecting that uh, heading into the fight, and do you think that sort of like helped set up, uh, you know, what, that kind of finishing flurry or any of the other uh, exchanges you guys had? 
I believe so. You know, when you are at this level, you have to be cool, calm, collective, and very, very smart to be the champion. You know, there's not a lot of guys who just come in here and just start swinging and become champion and stay champion for very long. If you look at all of them, they're very technical fighters, and they have very good game plans that they talked about with their coaches, their teammates, and whoever else is very intelligent when it comes to mixed martial arts and strategy. So I put my myself in his shoes, and I figured that all with with all of my UFC fights, I've gone in there and really just try to get the takedown and ground and pound and, and wear people out and grind on them and, and do all that good stuff. So somebody like like um, like this guy, uh, you know, I just can't even blanking on his name right now. Correct. Um, yeah, uh, Nicolau. So sorry, sorry. So somebody like him, his striking is he was so crisp and he's so smart. He was luring me in, so going into it, I, I knew I had to switch things up and just be really mindful that he is trying. He thinks I'm going to go for a takedown, so I was faking and fainting and trying to switch levels and switch feet, uh, switch my stances up, and just kind of really keep him guessing. And I felt like ultimately that threw him off from what he was expecting, and and allowed me to land my kick. Yeah. While I have you, I wanted to get sort of your take on what it was like in Calgary. That was the second card that they've ever held there. The first uh, had the main event with Jose Aldo fall through, and Dana White had always said he's going to you know, wanted to make it up to the city. Uh, what was it? What was the experience like for you, and, and did it feel like there was some buzz in the city for the event? You know, I, I didn't go out much, but I really did feel great energy going in there from the way in. Uh, a little bit of buzz around the, the hotel the whole time. People were waiting outside, signed some autographs, taking mm. pictures. Yeah, I feel like we really went out there and put on a show. A lot of great finishes, a lot of good fights. Um, I feel like everybody on the card needs a little bit of bonus because we all went out there and we did what you know Dana asked. Go out there and, and fight like uh, like you want that bonus, you know. And, I feel like everybody on the card delivered. I feel it was a very good card, uh, a makeup card, so to speak, from mm. from pe- previous events out there. Uh, I know I, I put on. I know a lot of other guys did as well. So let's get some uh, extra bonuses for everybody. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, the one thing that really surprised me, and it's kind of been a, a topic of much conversation, is. Uh, the rate, the ratings for the card were terrible. Uh, the worst in UFC and Fox history. In our MMA bubble, this was such a highly anticipated card. There were so many great fights. Uh, there was lots of buzz again in the MMA world, at least for Alvarez, Poirier, Jose Aldo is a legend. Great stacked fights, including yours with Nicolau. Uh, did you hear about this, and were you surprised? And I guess the second part of that is, do you have any sense, or what's your take on why? Uh, you know, some, some of the ratings lately have, have struggled for the UFC. Um, honestly, I, I did see that somewhere, but I didn't really think much of it because I was very happy with, with the card and mm-hmm. with my performance, uh, even the main, uh, main event, co-main, and uh, the women's bantamweight. Those girls put on a great, uh, great fight as well. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just the Canada scene, it didn't seem like there were a ton of people in Calgary in that area. So I, I don't know if it's really worth going back there. I personally, I really enjoy fighting in Canada, minus the taxes that they're they're taking out of my, <laughs> my purse. Yeah. But I've always felt like, I've always felt the energy. You know, my last fight there was in, uh, was in Toronto, and I felt that was a great turnout, great support from all the guys. I feel there's a lot of passion from the from the fans there's just not enough fans there yeah I just I, for me I, I just think it kind of goes back to you have to wonder if the UC is just putting on too many cards yeah, just if there's too many MMA cards in general because we're talking about you know ratings uh, down in the US as well yeah there could be part of that you know up in Calgary maybe the casual fan thinks so uh, makes the wrong assumption that it's not going to be a good card because it's not in a New York or in LA or something like that but um, you know I wrote a piece leading up to it and I thought it would do pretty good ratings just because you had four, three former champs, Eddie Alvarez, uh, Joanna Jacek, and Jose Aldo. 
you'd think that mainstream, the casual fans would be familiar with them. And yeah, just to see it struggle like that in the ratings, it just it really surprised me. Yeah, I, I feel also that there there's not enough build up for these fights. Yeah. They put on so many that it is hard to keep up with. Um you know, people still ask me, When is your next fight? When is your next fight? I'm like, dude, take two seconds out of your day and look at my Instagram. You know what I mean? I know you got Instagram and I know your face is in your phone twenty four seven just like everybody else. Take two seconds, look at my Instagram, it'll take two more seconds to find out when my next fight is. Yeah. There's so many fights going on, people can't even keep up with the ones that they with the people that they like, you know? So mm-hmm. Uh, but I, the, the UFC knows what they're doing. They'll make the adjustments that need to be made. If this many fights need to happen, then then they're doing it for a reason. Uh, is what I like to feel like. Last question for you. Uh, you know, as we're talking, it's beginning of August. Do you think you'll you'll be uh, tapped for a fight before the uh, end of the year? Do you think you'll get another one in before 2018's over? Oh, I sh- I sure as heck hope so. Yeah, <laughs> that's four months, right? That's four months of. Uh, you know, I'm I'm back training already. Um, not hard, of course. I'm on got a like a suspension for you know just to recover or whatever. Yeah. But there's not a lot of time to do this sport. We we are very physical athletes that take a lot of kicks and punches. Not just in the fight, you know. People people just look at the fight. We do this every single day. And that takes its toll on you, and it takes its toll on your brain as well. And there's just so much physical and emotional um, stress and, and feelings and everything that, that goes into being a mixed martial arts fighter. And so, therefore, it, it really limits your window, especially when you reach the UFC, you lose two fights, maybe three in a row, and then you got to start all over or you got to move on, you know, because it's not easy to get to the UFC. And it's, it's, it's even harder to stay there. You know, uh, Bert Watson used to say that all the time. And it's just something that has been imprinted in my brain ever since. And, and that's why I'm just so thankful that I'm still with the UFC, that I'm still an up-and-comer, that I'm still learning and evolving and, and doing my thing. So uh, I like to try to fight it as much as possible as long as I'm healthy and, and, and just keep going, you know. So... Four months without a fight, that would, that would that would be kind of devastating, especially on the street that I'm on. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I continue to continue to learn every day and um, and go out there and show people, and, and that's what I did. Ultimately, on last Saturday, that's what I showed people. Like, I'm changing, I'm evolving, and you better watch out. Well, Dustin, again, a uh, very impressive win, very notable win, and uh, I'm confident, hopeful that they'll get you on a, a card. Maybe, who knows, maybe New York City, November 3rd. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say anything about New York City, but their cards that they put on there, <laughs> their, their commission needs a little work, but uh, <laughs> I'll, fight, I'll fight whenever, whoever, whenever. All right, Dustin, thanks so much, and uh, best of luck uh, in your next fight.